course, the classic Eric Johnson skip fives lick would be a perfect application for the bounce technique. Why? What's going on here? Well, what's going on here is that I didn't recognize it at first. When I first heard this lick, I heard, okay, descending, repeating pattern in one position, sequence of notes. I know what that is. It's got to be this. <laughs> Gotta be the sixes pattern, right? That's the repeating unit that Eric uses all the time. We see it in his box position pentatonic playing. I'm doing it here one position up from that in what I would consider the second pentatonic position. Two notes per string, down, up, down, up, down, up on every string. Perfectly efficient, exactly downward pick slant compliant, and exactly not what he's doing here. I took a closer look at the tape. That's not six notes at all. Five. It's five notes. The last note of the six note sequence is missing. So the six note pattern now becomes a, a five note pattern and not just any old five note pattern. It's the five note pattern. The five note chunk that we've been building the entire house on here that we play in a single pentatonic position and cascade across the strings with sweeping. We know what that pick structure is. It's down, up, down, up, down on every string. Works out beautifully the way that Eric normally does it, but in this instance, now all of a sudden, it's problematic. Why? Well, because of the picking structure that gave us the trouble in the first place. It was down, up, down, up, down, and if we repeat that with alternate picking, it flips the picking, and then we get stuck in the strings, and we have all this unwanted or unpredictable string hopping happening. We can call it the bounce now, all this unpredictable bouncing. So when Eric does that, he uses sweeping. He uses the sweep to connect the final downstroke of the pattern with the first initial downstroke of the, of the next repetition. And of course, that works because the next repetition is now happening one string lower. So we go... And we sweep to the next higher string, but that next higher string is not the first string. It's the second string now, and then we keep going. We sweep and so on. In this case, this pattern isn't moving. So that final downstroke of the pattern has to somehow connect to the top note on the very first string that we started with. And the problem with that, what is it? There's a string in the way. We want to make sure that we can start this pattern on a downstroke every time. But now the problem, of course, is it ends on a downstroke. How do we get around this? Well, if, if only there were a way, if only we had a technique that would allow us to take a downstroke at a lower string and then connect that to a downstroke on a higher string using some kind of, I don't know, jumping movement, let's say, like a hopping type of movement. <laughs> The bounce technique, string hopping, is the way to do that. If we use our Johnsonian mechanics, then the actual pick structure here would be down, up, down, up, down. And that last downstroke, the fifth note of the sequence, would be the string hop or the bounce. And then we can attack the beginning of the pattern again on a downstroke, and now we have a unit that we can repeat. So this works, down, up, down, up, bounce, and then repeat the sequence. Down, up, down, up, bounce, down, up, down, up, bounce. It does work. It's definitely a challenge. This goes back to Eric's comment about using this as a warm up and staying loose. And um, the idea is just to keep that, you gotta keep the wrist loose to get that. It's a little harder to work on. I usually use that to warm up with. You're transitioning between two techniques here. The more the linear or more planar movement of alternate picking and then this curved movement of bouncing. And if you get rigidly locked into alternate picking, you won't be able to do this flexible bounce maneuver. And certainly you won't be able to do it at the kind of speeds that Eric reaches with this pattern. And at first I wasn't really either. And that made me want to go back to the tape and take a look at, at what this bounce movement actually looks like at high speed to see if there's some sort of optimization that we can use to make this more efficient. And when I did that, I noticed something rather unusual. Is it just me or does it look like he's not picking that last note? The fifth note, the bounce note, the one we've actually just been working on here, 
Is it simply not there? Look again. <laughs> It's like he's in position for it, but we don't really see that drop, and we certainly don't see anything that looks like a bounce coming after it. It just looks like efficient alternate picking form here, not necessarily string hopping form. So if he's not actually hitting that last note, let's just say if that's what he's doing, what would it be? Would it be this? Down up, down up, hammer, like has in hammer from nowhere. That doesn't sound half bad, does it? Not really sure if that's what he's doing, but there would be good rationale for this, right? Why would you do the bounce if it's not even necessary? It would be kind of unusual to see this sort of legato trickery, which you'd think of as more of like a Sean Lane kind of thing or a Holdsworthy kind of thing where you hammer onto a new string you're not even playing yet. It's not a very Eric thing to do. It's not a thing that we really see him doing in, in high-speed lead playing. So yet, at the same time, it does kind of sound pretty decent. So is it possible, again, we're going back to kind of our bounce technique sort of line of thinking here, is it possible he doesn't really know he's doing this? And, and if so, how could that be? How could you simply omit an entire pick stroke? That is one that is fairly critical to your entire picking strategies we've seen with the bounce thing and not really know you're doing it. Well, actually kind of, kind of easily. It kind of just flows, right? How could this happen? Well, let's say you're practicing this and you're using that bounce movement and the faster you get, the harder it, it becomes to actually make this bounce be more fluid. And then maybe one time, just sort of accidentally, you kind of miss the note, but it sounds good. And you don't really notice this consciously, but you, at some subconscious level, your brain kind of picks it up and goes, oh yeah, continue. <laughs> and so it's kind of like, it's a thing that worked and it registers at some subliminal level. And it also feels smoother because you're not doing this anymore. Now, the picking structure, if we use this hammer from nowhere, it's just down, up, down, up on the top two strings. And we do the hammer. Really efficient, doesn't sound half bad. And you could kind of almost imagine how this sort of thing would evolve naturally in, in someone's playing, right? Okay, so I'm thinking about this legato technique, but I'm also still generally experimenting with the bounce version where all the notes are picked, and that's when some strange things begin to happen. Okay, now this is weird, because here's a thing that's sort of awkward to do at slower speeds, and then as I get faster, it gets, what, easier? That makes no sense. So I started thinking, well, maybe I'm doing something different. We know from Eric's playing that at the upper echelons of speed, the bounce technique sort of morphs into sweeping. So if that's what's happening here, if I'm morphing into sweeping, then what's happening? Am I sweeping through a muted string? Well, that's a thing that players do. Rusty Cooley has a number of cool licks that work this way, but that just doesn't feel like what I'm doing here. And in fact, it almost feels like I'm still doing the bounce thing. I'm just somehow doing it better. So if that's the case, then, well, maybe I'm still doing the bounce, but it's just not quite bouncy enough, and I'm clipping the top of the string on my way over the top, but it's just so gentle I can't hear it and I can't feel it. I don't know. It's kind of a mystery. So I had to film myself to find out what was going on here. It turns out it's neither of those things. What's actually happening is different and very cool. Check it out. Okay, so I'm definitely hitting the string here. It's just not in the way I imagined. Instead of muting the string and sort of playing through it, what's happening here is that fifth note of the pattern, the down string, is making decisive contact with the middle string, the one we're supposed to be jumping over, and coming to a dead stop. Cool. And of course, we have a name for this. It's called 
a rest stroke. The rest stroke is something the gypsies love to talk about. It's often associated with a kind of very aggressive pick attack. But in truth, these two things are totally separate. You can have a gentle rest stroke, doing a down stroke on the A string and very lightly coming to rest against the D string. You can also have a very aggressive pick attack for a note that doesn't hit any other strings at all. Just pluck aggressively away from the strings. And if you think about it, this makes perfect sense. A rest stroke is a thing that happens after you play a note. You play a, a pick stroke, and if you move far enough, you're just gonna bottom out into whatever the next next higher string is or, or physically lower string is on the guitar. So there's no way it could possibly influence tone because that tone has already been created. That note has already been played. In our case, the purpose of the rest stroke is mechanical efficiency. It's there to bring the pick to a complete stop so that we don't have to spend the energy to do so. This is kind of like what drummers do when they use rebound to play double strokes. Rather than having to lift the stick back up, it's the rebound off the drum head that supplies the upward force, so that you as the player only have to supply the downward force. The way this works is pretty fascinating. The first hit is the wrist, then the second hit is the fingers closing, so you're not actually repeating any movements. And in between, it's the rebound that's bringing the stick back up. Now in our case, the rest stroke isn't really ricocheting the pick back at us. It's not really supplying rebound, but it is relieving some of the effort of having to stop that pick movement and then lift it up over the string and then do that bouncing movement, which becomes progressively more awkward as tempos get faster. Instead, once you hit that string and the pick comes to a stop, then you just sort of flop it over the top and you hit that down stroke and repeat the pattern. And what makes this all possible, of course, is downward pick slanting. Because the pick is leaning in this direction, there's relatively less resistance for it to flop over the string and start the pattern all over again. Now, yes, these are still two discrete movements. You have the downstroke that becomes the rest stroke, and then the downstroke that becomes the flop. And this is probably what I was feeling when I thought, oh, I'm still doing the bounce, but it just, it feels better somehow. And that better, I think, is what happens as you begin to get faster and you get this under your fingers, these two movements begin to blend and the whole process becomes kind of seamless. And of course, the more downward pick slanting you use, the more seamless it becomes because the less resistance there is and the pick is more easily able to slide over the top of the string without making any sound. The skip fives mechanic begins to feel smooth enough that when you think about the sweep version of this, the one that we normally use to cascade across a pentatonic box position, after a while, it's almost like in your mind, you can't tell them apart anymore. How cool is that? Skip fives connected seamlessly to sweep fives. In fact, they're almost the same thing. Very often, sweeping has a little bit of uh, rest stroking in it. So when it boils down to it, really the only difference here is the lift or the flop. And again, the more you get into that, the less you really even start to notice it which is very cool because here we've taken a pattern that formerly relied on sweeping to achieve elevated tempos, and we've given it a kind of fives independence to where we can now play it anywhere we want. 